Alright, let's see what's waiting for us in Goblet's ship. Oh, whoa. Okay, wow, you get attacked immediately as you set foot on the ship? That's not great. Oh, uh, let's see. Yeah, I turned the difficulty down to easy, because honestly, just the combat, the only thing it's doing is wasting more time. Ooh, no attacks. Nice. Okay. Interesting, they said nest when they referred to this place. Could there be something related to the... Something about the rats? Well, wonderful. Okay, we can't fix the freaking... Okay, so we need a pump to get rid of that electric moat. What's in here? I do not have the strength to... Let's examine this pump. Yeah, there's no way. I don't have seven intelligence. Uh, guess we asked these random guys. Really hope that they are. It's not programmed to be in the last one you look for. You look in, because that'd be very annoying. Oh, oh, I guess it isn't. Okay. Oh, there you go. Ooh. Oh, well, more rats. How many? Five? Yeah, that's not harder difficulty. It might be a big, bit of a problem because you only have one party member here. Hmm. Damn, four in a row. Ooh, hold up. Grenade launcher. Oh yeah, because it took the move. Okay. So hopefully I can get rid of him. Two.
Ooh. Hopefully he's not poisoned. To the deaths we go. Uh, let's see. Oh, damn, it's crowded people. Let's go find the Chasmus. Save the game. Make sure. We well, don't like losing progress. Okay, what is this? Due to recent weather issues, only three people were allowed on the top deck of any time. Report. Oh, it's like a police state. You folks. How do you- we don't- you don't even know what our friend looks like. How can you say you haven't seen her? No one's come down here today but you, not a soul. I didn't see anyone yesterday either. Can't remember much past then. Bad memory. Wow, I can't believe you used that simple logic to get her to open the door. Alright. What is this? Local inhabitant. Sick dwarf. Damn, plenty of bodies on there. Ah, uh, let's see. Sick dwarf. Friends of Gobbits. Huh, <laughs> friend, if you're looking for Gobbit, you're about three years too late. Your friend ain't here. And you stumbled into the worst kind of place to be. What's your name, friend? What's wrong with this place? Got a rat problem. Oh, this is Cadmus. So the dwarf is Cadmus. Um. Uh, look around all the rooms first before we do anything. What's this guy shipping him? Who are you? Mercurio. An artist and a socially and a man about town. <laughs> this? What is that pool of blood? Help me. Oh, okay, so I gave her a med kit. I don't know who you are, strangers, but you just saved my life. If I can ever return a favor, let me know. Took that bullet to the gut. The welcoming committee. I don't trust them, you shouldn't either. Don't know where their loyalties lie. Uh, what's your name, friend? Sparrow. How did he get shot? Part of the last mutiny attempt. Made it through alright, but I guess I also made some enemies. I don't know who shot me, but it's a fair bet someone on his boat is holding a grudge. Oh, this uh, political situation is not great either.
lower decks are absolutely crawling with the devil rats. <laughs> okay, so it's a, some kind of police state that's happening. Micromanaging. Damned rats. We've got a hell of an infestation going on in the lower levels, and we need to start doing something about it. Can I count on you and your boys to help me with this? I know that M will frown on what I'm proposing, but she isn't doing anything to help. We have to take matters into our own hands before things get ugly. It's quarantine time. That's exactly what I was afraid of, see? Those bloody rats have eaten us out of house and home, and now their food supply is gone. They've decided to turn on us. It's pretty clear that M can't or won't use her magic to fix this, so it's on us to deal with the fallout. I've had the upstairs maintenance crew set aside a couple of containers as a quarantine area slash sick room. It's inevitable we're going to start seeing people getting sick and we need people to shelf them. If we don't do this, we're going to have a panic on our hands. Vita's deaths aren't pretty. Well, it's going to be another mutiny, I assume. So we found Cadmus. Uh, but now what? <laughs> something is before something catches your eye. A vent in the wall behind the locals. Movement. Something living must be hidden inside. Don't go. Oh, Gobbit lands in a crouch for weapons race. Don't go in there. It's a trap. Oh. Oh, hey. Okay, Gobbit's. So it's good to see she's fine. I'm sorry. We didn't want to do it. We didn't have a choice. She. It. It ordered us to. What it? I don't know what it is, but it talks to Malvina's voice, but it isn't her. If you want to live, you have to do what it says. Hey, is Hey, Seattle. I don't remember inviting you on this run, but I guess I'm glad you could make it. You're welcome, by the way. We're welcome, Gobbit. We came here to help you. And now that I've finished pulling your ass out of the fire, maybe you can do that. Did I mention they were leading you into a trap? Because that's what they were doing. Yeah, you mentioned it. What kind of trap? The kind where you end up dead. <laughs> Look, I don't know exactly what they were planning to do, but I've seen them lead people through those doors before. The people I watched go in there never came back out again. Not a one. They just scream and scream. And when the doors open up, they'd be gone. So you don't know what's actually in there. But no, but by judging all, uh, by judging by all the screaming, I'm going to make an educated guess that's probably something bad. So now they're all together. Do you want to tell us why you're back here all by yourself? We'd have gone with you, Gobbit. All you had to do was tell us. Yeah, yeah, I know. But I figured this one was on me, and I didn't want to wait another minute. Besides, I had a plan. You're on a boat full of hostiles by yourself in the dead of night, being hunted by devil rats. Doesn't sound like a great plan to me. Didn't come back here to fight Seattle. This is a recon mission. I want to scope the place out. And it's easier to do that solo than it would have been dragging you two along. No offense. So you scoped the place out. Fine. Mission accomplished. Do you know what you're going to do now? Yeah, this place is fucked. I'm going to sink it. Wait, what? The sinking ship is doomed, Seattle. I could feel that the second I sat on, set foot on board. Earlier than that, even. On some level, I think I could feel it back home. That's why I couldn't stop thinking about this place. Whatever is happening here, it's wrong. This whole place feels off to me, somehow. Maybe even toxic. I came back to find my friends, Cadmus and Malvina, to check on them. Instead, I found a swarm of man-eating rats, a death trap, and a bunch of squatters who seem intent on killing me. So I'm going to kill them right back, and I'm going to use the scuttling charges that are still embedded in the hole to do that. I've already handled the one on this level, but I haven't gone down below yet. We need to activate the charge below the water line if we're going to bring this sucker down. So that's where you're headed next? Downward? Not quite, on account of the trap. I don't know how to get past it yet. Minor setback, right? So my next step was to figure that out. Yeah, we ran into Cadmus earlier. He always was more of a mechanic than he was a shaman. Yeah, just come on, dude. There's obviously something better something deeper going on here. Let's go talk to Cadmus and see what's up. Gobbit, back after all this time. It's only three years. 
Yeah, sorry, I'm sorry it's been so long. It's good to see you, kid. It's good to see you too, kid. I see you found your friends. Uh, well, I'm breathing. Kinda. That's more than I can save for some. Cadmus, I save it. I'm not mad. I'm just mostly happy to hear your voice again. It's good to have a friend. Are you sick? Ill? I would say so. Definitely ill. Vetus is a real bitch. Even a neuter strain like this one can really knock you down on your ass. You'll be okay, Cad. You're a dwarf and a shaman. That's two big points in your favor. You're gonna walk this off. You'll see. Spare me the pep talk. I'm too tired to walk. He coughs into his sleeve. Save it. I know what my chances look like and they ain't good. I've seen a lot of our friends loaded into those cots, Gobbit. They all went out in garbage bags. Anyway, let's talk about something else, huh? All this doom and gloom is getting to me. Tell us what's happening here. Bad things. A lot of good people died. Something's gone rotten on this raft, Gobbit. You know what I mean. Toxic. Is that word again? Yeah, I can feel it too. I can feel it all the way back home. Cadmus, where are our friends? What happened to Yasmin and Anson and Malvina? Anson's dead. He never even made it into the sick room. Just disappeared. But I know where he went. He stabs a finger downward at the door. At the floor. Yasmin's still with us. Small favors. But the fight has gone out of her. She's content to do what she's told and tremble. Malvina ain't Malvina anymore. What is she? I don't know what it is. It's definitely toxic. But as for what it is... Malvina went off the rails because of that damn bauble I gave her. That's what happened, isn't it? It ain't her, Gobbit. It's something else. He struggles to contain another cough. Eventually it passes. But yeah, that shiny red egg that you and Soy lifted is the cause of it, I think. The ugliness was already inside of her, but that thing brought it out. Shit. You said about me, so what is it? You ever heard of a Rat King? It's an old folklore thing. A bunch of rats all fused together, their tails all wrapped and twisted into a giant, uh, great big knot. That's what Mal's become, I think. I don't know how many different spirits she's tied her essence to, but the last time I opened my third eye to her, I couldn't see where they ended and she began. What does that mean? I never heard of. It means she ain't human anymore, girl. Her aura is bound to other things. Alien things. All tangled and twisted and grown together. They're all one being now. A Rat King. It talks like Malvina, but it ain't her anymore. So this Rat King is still human, physically speaking? Don't know. I've heard rumors that Malvina's meat body is changing too. Haven't seen it myself. Don't know if I want to. Uh, okay. The, sh the talisman, the shiny object. Do you know how it works? Nah, I tried the sensing it once. The only thing I took from the experience was a migraine. Felt like there were railroad spikes buried behind my eyes for days. All I can tell you for certain is that it still works. As long as the Rat King is connected to that thing, you can't hurt it. Any holes you put in its body will close up on their own. Okay, so it's invincible. He has a healing factor. If the bauble makes the thing unkillable, then you'll need to find a way to get that bauble away from it. Gobbit managed to do that during Soy's Rebellion. I'll bet she can do that again. Did you try to fight this Rat King? Yeah, I had enough. A lot of us had, so we took a page from Soy old Soy's book. We mutinied. That's what's left of our side. Been locked in there for five days, waiting for Vetus to finish the job. The rest of us got fed to rats. Don't seem to have gone very well. Truth is, we weren't prepared for how many of those bastard rats Malvina had bred, and we weren't expecting our shipments to fight on her behalf. Why would the others stop him from taking the ship back? That doesn't even make any sense. Why do you think, girl? Fear. Fear of death. Fear of being gnawed apart by a hundred vermin. Fear of that thing. They're just afraid? Scared shitless is a better way of putting it. I can't blame them. If anything, we're the crazy ones for fighting that thing. Okay, if the Red King soldiers only serve it because they're afraid, then maybe we can turn them away from it. Could do. They may rally against some, uh, around someone they know. Maybe someone who lived and fought with them years ago. That was a subtle hint, girl. He yeah, eyes gobbit. Got a better idea. We're going to get you and your people onto lifeboats. Then we're sending this raft to the bottom of the bay, and the Red King is going to go with it. You can't mean that. This is our home. We've got nowhere else to go, gobbit. I'm not going to let that thing force us to push this raft to the torch. You've already tried it your way. Look what happened. Isabel steps in. Maybe it's good that you leave this place. I've lived in a place like this before. I've seen what it can do to people. She grew up in the walled city, kid. Then she knows what we got to look forward to if you sink this raft, because we sure as hell can't afford to live anywhere else. Gobby, listen. It isn't too late for the sinking ship. He cranes his neck to look up, pleading. Desperation burns in his eyes. We can still turn this thing around. My mutiny failed because the Red King knew things that we didn't. Yours can succeed if you'll try. Gobbit shakes her head obstinately. 
my gut says we should sink the raft. It said that from the moment I arrived here. That's what Rat wants me to do. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna try to convince her to not sink this ship. My gut says, spare us the lecture, Goblin. Cadmus is right. You're going off half cocked again. Truth is, we can save this raft if you want to. If you don't, tell us and we'll sink it. All right, Cad. If you're so sure you can keep up your end, I'll be willing to help you with your mutiny. But if your people fuck it up, I'm sinking this thing. Got it? All right. Oh, go on. Get moving and convince as many people as you can help you can to help us when the time comes. Whoever you don't bring around our side is gonna fight against us. So be thorough about it. When you're ready for us to make our move, trigger the shipboard alarm systems. Two blasts, then we'll start kicking indoors. One blast means you're sinking the ship. You do that, I'm kicking your bony ass from here to Macau. But I hear you. You know what we're supposed to do? Okay, we convince people to join you, then trigger the alarm. One blast means we're sinking the raft. Two means the mutiny is on. Got it. Alright. Time to rally the people, I guess. Oh, well, we already have someone on our team. The orc we, see, we healed probably on us. Oh? Well, if she's gonna fight me, I guess better now than later. I mean, I don't enjoy it, but... Let's see if I can convince this guy. Gobbit, you're back! Yasmin! Raft is cursed. <laughs> yeah, it spies everywhere. Rats, those little monsters, and the kind on two legs. And it talks over the intercom using Malvina's voice, but it isn't her. They're taking the ship back. Yay, come Mr. Friend. Okay. Let's see what, uh... A squatter. Ivan. Used to be pretty good with a blade. Paid a pretty pain to have one custom forge for me, even. The, that blade was a lovely thing. Useful in and out of the fight, and I was like that. It wasn't just a weapon, it was a tool as well. What happened to the blade? Melee weapon six. Oh, okay. Oh. Oh, yeah! Power of uh, etiquette, I guess. Um, I mean, I'm pretty sure the social light is not going to be helpful, but it doesn't hurt. Help me with medical supplies. Sure, give her a med kit. Goddamn, you're greedy lady. I'll give you two mid kits just to get your help. Alright, let's see what the socialite's doing. Yep, charisma's useful. Aha! There you go. Alright, how about this guy? Oh, 
the save. It's an interesting parallel. Because there's a now there's a third mutiny. There's also a panel or something? Okay, hold on, let me see. Find Malvino. Is there supposed to be some kind of... Oh. Yeah, let's get out of here. It's probably some kind of... We have to figure out how to work the trap, damn it. Who would know? Maybe Cadmus would know? Oh, yeah, I didn't ask him about that, actually. There's a trap room at the end of the hall. Wow, oh, okay. Uh, started small. A couple of months after Soy's mutiny, Malvina started proposing new rules. She said she was cracking down on infractions, keeping order to keep us safe. Over time, those rules started piling up. And gradually, the punishment started getting worse. That well, was the power. I, I think it gave her power. She corrupted herself. No judgment, though. I think that in her place, a lot of us would do the same. That's what I mean I, well, when I say she had it in her all along. I think she'd always be afraid. Had always used the rules to protect herself. The trick it took that fear and focused it like a lens. And that opened the door. What she become? She. Uh. Alright. Let's go. Talk to Yasmin again. Uh, the wires you need to snip. Snip those wires. Okay. The killing pit. Oh, so it's a trapdoor. So there's a floor panel somewhere. Uh. Gee, thanks. Alright. We disarmed it. Down to the floor, down into the lower levels we do. Okay, so this is probably where the killing pit is. I think we found where the missing squatters went. Nah, we made a promise, man. We gotta keep this. Uh, we have, I'll have to get the shiny object away from wrecking if we want to kill it. That'll probably be tricky. I don't think she'll just let me saunter up and... Third time's the charm. Yeah, this, this uh, bauble seems to be tied up to her destiny. Oh. Accidentally armed to charge. That's not great. Where is this? Oh, okay. Here come the rats. They'll be fine. Okay, there's four. Yeah, 
I don't. Damn it, I can hit him, but it'll probably get team attacked. Full on, oh baby. Oh, she is not very good with her SMG. Ooh, blocked. Some items, pick that up. Shamanic salve. Oh, we gotta find the alarm, right? Mm. Hold on, I'm gonna save just in case. Where the alarm is? Oh. Oh, oops. Oh, good. They tell you that. It's a good thing they tell you that. Let's go find the alarm system. Yeah, because I was uh, super worried about. It. I was like, what if you just walk into the boss room by accident and you didn't have the, you didn't sound the alarm to get the people. Okay. Yeah. Start the mutiny. Okay. Hey, you get a karma for that, which is nice. Let's go. Whoa, what is that thing? The thing that looms over you is horrifying. A twisted amalgamation of woman and swarm. Knotted and tied together into a single hole. Oh, she's just covered in a layer of rats? Goblin. You have returned to us, little mouse. You, the instigator of our own ascendancy. The keystone, the source of our unity, the font of power that makes us strong. Your gift to us, little mouse. You gave us what we needed to bring this raft to order. Goblin's nose crinkles in revulsion. On her shoulders, madness and folly chitter and shriek. Save me the speech, Malvina, or whatever you are. I'm not here to talk. The new body isn't doing you any favors, by the way. You look like a furry tree stump. <laughs> Our new body is beauty itself. Unity of biology and unity of purpose. Yeah, what happened to you? Well. Alright, it's time to attack. <laughs> it's attacking to just toss us giant bundle of rats at you. So you get to move twice? I oh, don't know. Okay, I was like, oh. Well. Whoa, these are bigger rats. Okay, so we gotta go get the shiny object now. Yes! Yo, she can run all the way across the map and get to it. The Rat King shrieks as Gobbit lifts the shiny object in her hands. In its voice, you can hear the echoes of a thousand inhuman beings. This is interesting. She hugs the shiny object to her chest, her bare hands caressing the stone. I can feel Malvina's control over the rats. It's like a thousand strings connecting her to them. And it feels like... One of the Rat King's servitors shudders in place. Slowly, seemingly against his will, it lifts his head to stare at you. I can tug at those strings. Malvino's cultured voice is overtaken by the inhuman roar of the other things that share her body. We will rend you all to pieces, tear your flesh to shreds. Buy me a little time, Seattle. I'm still getting used to this thing, but if you give me a minute or two, those demon rats will be mine. I can do that. Oh, she's immune. Okay. I want to just buy time, or I mean, it's it's on easy. Forget it. I'll just 
Let's take him out. Oh wait, no, they're just standing there? Oh no, no, they're not. Okay. Oh, darn damn, they're all going after Isabel. <laughs> oh. Oh, he just heals the full. Uh. Did it work? Oh, it did! Oh, I control the rats now. Nice! Took one turn. Well, they're not super useful. They do two damage. That's fine. My main guys will do the job. That was not very good, though. Well, I mean, I guess it's their shaman abilities that are useful. Last rat, finish her off. Yes. The Rat King's body sh shudders and convulses. As you watch the living carpet of devil rats that form the, the majority of its bulk begins to rive. Malvina opens her mouth to speak, but you'll never know what she was going to say. The only sound that escapes from her throat is a long, ragged scream. With a dawning horror, you come to realize what you're looking at. The devil rats that surround Malvina are turning inward. She's being eaten alive. Gobbit stares, dead-eyed, at her former friend, as the swarm that has bound her rips her body apart. Black blood pours in rivers to the aluminum-lined floor. Come on, Gobbit, let's get the hell out of here. You go if you want, but I'm watching this. I owe Malvina that much. Oh, well, the man who passes the sentence swings the sword? That's what we're doing. The ghastly feast unfolding before you continues long after Malvina's screams have died away. Finally satisfied, Gobbit nods to you. The raft is ours, it's over. I don't know what you did, but whatever it was, it worked. Those rat things turned on Malvina's loyalists. And when they got done eating them, they started eating each other. Yeah, I know, I told them to. Right after I did the same to the Rat King. Malvina's dead, Ked. You did good, Gobbit. You and your friends. We won. Come on, Topside. A celebration's in order. Nah, Ked. No celebrations and no milling around. You can't keep this place. I'm done with it. Too many bad memories. And besides all that, you got a hell of a mess on your hands. I'll be damned if I'm going to help clean it up. You've already helped us clean up, Gobbit. We'll always owe you for that. Yeah, well, it's not a big make a big thing out of it. Goodbye, Cad, and good luck. She flicks the PDA off, the screen goes dark. Captain Jomo's still waiting for us outside. Ready to go home? Beyond ready. <laughs> and this oh, she passes the shiny object from one hand to the other, scowling, and this stupid thing's taking a one way trip to the bottom of the bay. Do we want to toss it? Ah, uh, I don't know. Having cursed objects. Yeah, just throw that thing away. Yeah, after seeing what happened to his previous owner, maybe should not hold on to this. I choose a uh, loyalty mission next, I guess. Uh, 
Uh, I should have a lot of karma right now. I don't know, nine. Should get more cyberware? No, oh, range weapon seems to be. I just think I just want to improve my range weapon damage at this point. I think only quickness. No, no, chance to hit. It only affects. Oh, damage is only. Um, what does range combat do? Chance to hit. All three are chance to hit, which is kind of weird. Uh. I should just get some more HP at this point. My chance to hit is pretty high. Everyone got their final upgrade? Alright. Haste. Consume spirit. Nah, I think haste is better. Uh, what do we got? Sabotage. Oh no, just take sabotage. Lethal force. Has a magnetic cyber arm installed. Allow him to throw back incoming grenades. I'll take the gas grenade for sure. Guide you to Red Samurai. Gains a katana attack that can hit adjacent targets. Plus two damage. Cool. Ooh, regeneration, huh? That's pretty good. But nah, I take the swordsman thing. Predator. Heavy laser mount. Yes, I will take the predator. Everyone's maxed out. I think. Oh, all everyone's upgrades done. Let's see what uh, if the troll family has has resolved their problems. Nope, nothing here. Guess not. All right, or maybe it's probably wrong. Check the last one, but hey, okay, who knows? I might be able to buy some armor. Actually, how much is a shotgun worth? I could sell that, but Sam Blaster only a hundred? What? That's such garbage. Okay, okay, I might have enough at the end of this. Oh, but it wasn't a job, yeah, I don't get paid for that. It was just to help Gobbit out. Oh, I haven't talked to Spider Shen in a while. Let's see what's up with him. Oh, well, thought you didn't sell your animals. Brokering a deal between a reptile wholesaler and a friend of mine who needs a lot of snakes for his Ned Trud product. Ever heard of a man by the name of Dr. Shen Yang? Yeah, I did. How, oh, well, how about that? I knew that little dirty little dwarf got around, but I didn't think he could, he'd hire freelancers to some, handle something I could. You must be familiar with what a weird little bastard he is, then. So these snakes are for his next trend movie. I think he's calling it Martian Snake Witches of the Fourth Reich. <laughs> it's some terrible science fiction movie about time-traveling wizards from the future. God knows where he gets the funding for these ideas. They sure don't sell for crap. This one time, he wanted to make a trend show starting me, White Ming, and the rest of our crew. It was going to be about daily life in a triad, but he wanted to make a sitcom. I don't know what's real, what's so comedic about extortion, racketeering, and assault, but it's a strange little brain for you. Oh, I'm, not a, I'm not a melee guy. Yeah, this is again the problem of like giving choices and like combat choices. You want to be melee, you want to be spells, you want to be. You know, hacker in a game where combat kind of doesn't really matter all that much. The choices aren't really that big. I pick them range because that's where you're safest, right? Like this game, all the approaches just okay. Crafty, got something new for me.
I should have a healing spell for my main character. My, my shaman skills haven't really gone to anything. Probably should have been tech and, uh, tech and quickness. Let's see if anything new on the... Nope, no one read messages. Nothing. See if my two favorite members have anything to say to me. Rector, I really I must feel Rector's uh it's really interesting. Is uh somebody on the team must have really loved uh transhumanism. Or maybe they just played a lot of Deus Ex. <laughs> oh, I have to do guy choose loyalty mission, probably. Before he'll talk to me again. I did just do gobbits, so she probably has something. <clears throat> Duncan's been quiet for a while. Alright, Gobbit, let's continue our training. <laughs> Quote unquote. Okay. <laughs> Her jaw works to manage the enormous quality of crispy dough in her mouth, but she doesn't seem to be making much headway. <laughs> she tilts the pitcher bag and sucks in its contents. As the water pours into her mouth, she's slowly able to work through the food stored in her cheeks. Finally, she lowers the water pitcher, coughing. Yeah, okay. Uh, note to self, the pastry terrace on Prince Edward Road makes them try. Moist green apple and jelly trotter my ass. That was thing was like a desert made of pig. <laughs> Maybe you shouldn't have tried to cram the entire thing into your mouth at once. I was challenging myself. For science. It wasn't the whole pastry. It was just half of one. She lifts the remaining pastry for your inspection. The pork floss that coats its exterior almost looks almost festive. It's more reminiscent of a beige curly tinsel than it is a food. You want the rest? Thanks, but I was hoping we could talk. So, uh, you probably want to talk about what happened on the raft, huh? I think it was your in your place, I probably would. I mean, it, that was kind of a thing, right? First off, I should thank you. You and Niz came to help me, even though I didn't ask you to, or want you to. Actually, maybe I should be upset about that, but the important thing is that you did help me. I'm not going to say I couldn't have handled it without you, but it would have been really, really dicey. You can say that again. The situation on the raft was pretty bad. On the bright side, we overthrew Malvina and put the raft back in Cad's hands. That feels pretty great. And that shiny object is at the bottom of the bay, lodged in a bank of silt and crab shit. That's pretty much where it belongs. But I gotta admit, something's gnawing at me. Before you and this showed up, I was gonna sink the ship. I had gotten halfway through arming the charges, and I was gonna send the whole sinking ship down in flames. Everyone on it would have died. Cad and Yasmin, all of them. All because I made my mind early, and I didn't want to change it. Kinda makes me think. How many times before now have I done what seemed like the right thing, you know? Followed my gut, like I taught you, without realizing there was a better option. The whole introspection thing kinda sucks, I gotta say. She looks up at you, scowling. It's much more comforting to just assume that all my past decisions were right. <laughs> sure it is. It's intellectually dishonest, but it's definitely comforting. She bites her lower lip. Yeah. You know, Seattle, you aren't helping my mood any. I'm kinda having a tough time over here. She begins to pace, kicking piles of dirty clothes and bank blankets out the way. Thrusting her hands into her pockets, she fishes out with madness and folly and tosses them down onto her cot. I don't do this very often. Reflecting is for mirrors, not devastatingly attractive street shamans. I don't know how you hand ringers deal with feeling this way. <laughs> By hand ringers, you mean people who learn from their mistakes? I guess, maybe. I don't know. Like I said, I don't really want to. I don't really do this kind of thing. So tell me, what comes next? What come after it? Am I teaching you a lesson now, Gobbit? Is there some role reversal going on here? <laughs> the corner of her mouth tilts downward. Yes, yeah, so a wise one. You're teaching me. Now quit being smug about it and give me an answer. I don't know, Gobbit. Try to learn from your mistake. Be a grown-up. It isn't that hard. Huh. Your way is boring, Seattle, and it's complicated. And it comes with way too many bad feelings. She scowls. But yeah, I get it. There's probably even some value there. I'm never going to start second-guessing everything I do, though. That just isn't me. Maybe you should start second-guessing some things when new information presents itself. Yeah. 
Anyways, things turned out the way that they did. I don't know what might have happened if we tried to do something different. There's only one thing I can't say for certain. Things are better in Hongkong Bay than they were before we got out to the sinking ship. We did some good out there. And that's something. Yeah, it is. Oh, actually, there are two things I can say for certain. I think Rad is happy that the shiny object is gone. She fishes in her pocket for a few seconds, then produces a chi uh, chunk of stone the size of a marble. It appears to be made of the same marbled red jade that the shiny object was. Check it out. She gave me a present. Gobbit, are you sure that came from Rat? Of course I am. I had a vision. It had colorful lights, dancing rodents, storks. And when the world came back into focus, this magic marble was in the palm of my hand. She tosses the stone into the air and catches it with her other hand. Neat, huh? Now, I don't know quite know how it works yet, but I'm sure it does something. I mean, it has to, right? Rat wouldn't just give me a normal rock. She's a trickster and all, but that'd be mean. So mark my words, the next time we're in the field, something magical is going to happen. I mean, literally magical. It'll be a journey of discovery for the both of us. Uh, is it sure it's not just a miniature version of, uh, the shiny object? What does it do? It's, well, it's kind of like a grenade. When I throw it, it goes boom. Not out here in the real world, but in the astral plane. It's pretty impressive. As for what it actually does, it scares the shit out of anyone who gets caught in the blast. Makes them act like idiots. They run around with their hands in the air or forget who, about who they're shooting at and stand around with their fingers in their ears. Handy, huh? Yeah, it sounds great. I'm just a little iffy about how you got this and why. Don't be. It came from Rat. I'm pretty sure of that. The dancing rodents in my vision were a pretty good indicator. So, uh, here's the thing. When I use this thing, what I think I'm doing is opening a bunch of temporary cracks in the astral plane. Just little ones, only wide enough for sounds to pass through. People in the blast radius can hear things on the other side. So let's say I throw this sucker at someone and it goes off. Boom. All of a sudden, that poor slob can hear things uh, that got into Malvina shrieking in his brain. Sounds unpleasant. Yeah, it's a bad time for them. All those voices at once, yelling and babbling and cursing, doing their racking thing. It drives you nuts, right? That's basically what it does. It drives people mad. It makes them work against their own self-interest. It's like a temporary insanity in pebble form. If you say so, I'd be wary of using. I'd be wary of anything that might be connected to the shiny object. Get right to you. Now here's the best part. After I use one of these things and go to bed, I find another one in my hand the next morning. I tried it a couple of times now, and it keeps happening. Toss, explode, nap, visions of dancing rats, and ta-da! New magic pebble. Using this feels right in a way that the shiny object never did. I think that it's rats reward to me for taking Malvina down or something. I don't know exactly. I've never heard of this happening to anyone. Anyway, it should help us moving forward, and considering that we're heading against next, I think we can use all the help we can get. Got a lesson? All that can wait though. We got this whole situation with the walled city and your foster dad and gun show and all that to take care of. It's kind of a mouthful. Lots of players involved, tons of intrigue. Honestly, I'm enthralled by the whole thing. Can't wait to see how it turns out. <laughs> we'll see how... Yeah. The pot on on the hot plate. It's always full. I keep a soup going on that thing 24-7. If you ever want any, you're welcome. Just come on in. I love the company. Alright. Let's talk to her about... Isabel. She told me uh, you let her out on the out of the walled city when you were kids. Care to fill in the details about that? Yeah, I guess I'm not surprised. This has never been big on padding a story with unnecessary detail. Want to tell your side of the story? Seems that I got a vested interest in the walled city these days. Yeah, sure. Why not? I'll share. She taps her chin thoughtfully. To start, I guess you're going to need to know what the walled city was like when me and his were kids. She didn't tell you anything about that, did she? She drops some hints, but I like to hear you take. Well, for starters, you should probably know that the walled city wasn't always as bad as it is now. It was always dangerous, but ten years ago it was just a run-of-the-mill slum. Still safe enough that walking in didn't qualify as a suicide attempt. I figure what I saw in there had to be the bottom of a downward trial. The bottom? What you saw? No, Seattle. When you went into Lotus Den, you were on the outer perimeter of the walled city. What you saw earlier is the best that the walled city of today has to offer. As you get deeper toward the center, it gets a whole hell of a lot worse. Anyway, back when I was a kid, it was pretty much all like what you saw in the Lotus Den. Not exactly Victoria Harbor, but survivable if you knew what you were doing. Back then, I used to play in the Walled City. Rat would lead me into all the nooks and crannies that grown-ups were too big to fit through. There was this other young shaman in there I used to play with. His name was Happy or Lucky or something like that. He followed Pig. Nice guy, good card player. 
Obviously, none of this was a good idea. A teenage girl going to Wall City by herself? That's a recipe for disaster. I didn't realize any of this at the time, though. I loved playing in the alleys and crawl spaces of the Wall City. It was fun. Were your parents during all this? Now, with Isabel, it's a bit different. She wasn't a street kid, not technically. She had parents who loved her. They just couldn't keep her safe because in the Walled City, there's no such thing. How bad was it for her? Bad. Couldn't have been a lot worse. Of, uh, could have been a lot worse, of course. Her family could have been living deeper inside the wall, toward the center. From what I heard, that's hell on earth. But Isabel and her city had it bad enough. They were in the Mansion District. Mansion District. Sounds nice, right? But it really, it really isn't. Imagine a sort of holding pen for refugees from the Middle East and Africa. Basically anyone who isn't Asian, European, or Goblinoid. Now cram it full to twice its normal capacity and make sure nobody living in there can afford a loaf of bread. Why isn't it called the Mansion District? The locals named after the Chungking Mansions out of, out in Shinsasui. Sort of an inside joke. The mansions are the unofficial African quarter of Hong Kong. Most of the free enterprises zones African immigrants settle there if they can afford it. The destitute refugees, like Iz and her family, don't get to go to Chunking Mansions. They get herded into the walled city. And once they're inside, the mansion district is where they set up and wind up. Forced relocation, huh? I guess some things never go out of style. The only thing that most of the people in the mansions had in common was the color of their skin, and the fact they were living together in cr crushing poverty. They didn't even have a common language to speak. It was a pretty rough place. Lots of infighting, lots of gang-on-gang -gang violence. People did band together for protection, but there were, wasn't a lot of hope. Everyone lived in fear of being sent deeper into the slum, toward the center. When you start getting dragged in that direction, you don't come back. Anyway, this is where I met Isabel. It wasn't long before we were friends. She was interesting. I think that's why I let her latch on to me. The girl was smart and savvy, but cripplingly shy. She didn't belong in the walled city. No one really does, but with her it was painfully obvious. She was like a little mouse crammed into a box full of weasels. It was only a matter of time before someone snapped her up. So what happened? What led you to take her out of the walled city? Rat happened. She came to me in a dream and showed me that whatever was going bad in the walled city was getting worse. The whole place was rotting from the inside out. Choking in bad chi and lost hope. I decided to go inside one more time. If I found Isabel, I'd offer to lead her out. If I didn't, well... She grimaces and spread her arms. You did find her. Doesn't matter what would happen if you hadn't. Thanks. It isn't pleasant to think about, especially considering what a shithole the walled city is now. The truth is, of the matter is, if I hadn't pulled Isabel out of there, she'd probably be dead by now. I get it. Someone did the same for me and Duncan once. She nods. Yeah, I knew you'd get it. And I did bump into her, and she did follow me, and Rat got us both out safe. So there you have it. Happy endings all about. What about Isabel's family? You think I didn't want to? She sweeps a loose strand of hair out of her eyes. Look, it was going to be dangerous enough to get Isabel out of her own. Dragging a whole family out with her would have been impossible. Yeah, I get it. Besides, which, Isabel didn't want to bring her family. She wanted to get away from them as much as she did from the Walled City. Never could get her to tell me why. What about that other shaman? They went bad. Crazy. That pig shaman that I knew wound up going a full-on toxic. It was horrifying. He burned himself out in an orgy of blood. Nasty business. And not for me. Toxic, what does that mean? When a shaman goes toxic, he goes bad. It's like if you invert the usual meaning of a totem, that's what a toxic shaman does. Dog shamans are loyal and friendly, like all good dogs are. A toxic sh dog shaman is rabid. They're both dog, but they're different aspects of dog. Get it? Oh. Oh. Is there anything else? Thoughts about that last run? All right, maybe I can get Isabel to, now that I have her backstory. Do something. Okay, uh, Gaba told me about your escape from the Wall City, just like you said she would. <laughs> Why are you telling me about it? Because the answer she gave me raised more questions. The Wall City was a hellhole, you already know that, but for all its failings, it was a good teacher. It taught me to hide, to stay small and unnoticed and insulated, to survive. It taught me that the fish on the perimeter of the school get eaten, that sticking your neck out is a fool's errand, but that even fools can have their uses. It also taught me how to recognize a stronger person when I met one, and how to use that strength for my own benefit. So when I met Gobbit, I knew she had something I didn't. Her magic, you mean? 
Do not. And her connection to Ren and her willingness to risk her life on a whim. We were different people then. Still are now. But the differences were even more pronounced when we were kids. If you were so different, how did you get, get along? I think that she was fascinated with me. How serious I was. She was nothing like that. Gobbit was playful and carefree. She could hold her own in a scrape, but mo she mostly saw life as a game. As for me, well, I knew that it wasn't. But I saw an advantage in cultivating a friendship with Gobbit, so I tried my hardest to make that happen. I couldn't have been more than 9 or 10 at the time, but I f saw her for what she could be. An ally? Now that didn't happen till later. What I saw her as was a road out of the walled city. A path to freedom disguised as a little girl with dreadlocks. As it turned out, I was right. She pauses, her eyes flit to the ground, she tightens her hands into fists. Ever since I unlocked these damn memories, I can't go 10 minutes without thinking about what might have happened if I hadn't followed Gobbit out of that place. It's like a vicious cycle, running over and over in my head. I hate it, but I won't stop. I feel guilty. You need to help and you took it. There's nothing to be ashamed of. Gives me another reason to feel grateful to her, I guess. That's something. Always, I've always known that I owed Gobbit, but now I remember how much and why. Anyway, that's my side of the story. Gobbit said you didn't want her to guide your parents out of the walled city. That you wanted them left behind. She nods miserably. Uh, yes, but not for anything they've done. My parents were good people. They fled Somalia to try and find a better life for their children. It wasn't their fault that they wound up in the walled city. I wanted them left behind for me. For you? What do you mean by that? Isn't it obvious? She taps her temple. This. I knew in it, I, what I was going to have done. I planned it well in advance. After I got out, I was going to make find someone who could make my childhood go away. How would it have stuck if my parents were around? If I had a living reminder right there next to me? It wouldn't have. So they had to stay. That's cold, Isabel. It's survival. Besides, I was sure they'd be fine. They were my parents. Grown-ups. They'd be alright. She hears a sigh. Before you ask, I checked. They're gone now. I can't go riding to their rescue. I made a decision when I was a kid. It felt like the right one at the time, and now I have to live with it. We all have to live th with things we regret. I didn't always, n until very recently. I couldn't remember any of this. Uh, why do you have your memories locked away? Why do you think? They are awful. Traumatic. I'm not talking about personal trauma here. I was fortunate enough to avoid the fates of many of my peers. I didn't get pressed into service in a brothel. The organ leggers didn't get me. I only had to watch one of my siblings die. She frowns. So yeah, it could have been worse, but that doesn't make any early life in the walled city any easier to bear. Hang on, you watch one of your siblings die? Yes, she nods. My older brother, Cabdale, heroin overdose. He was 19, almost the same age that I am now. I'm sorry you had to watch that. Me too. Want to hear something awful? I almost envied him. He got out easy compared to a lot of people who died in the walled city. There was no violence, he wasn't taken by organ leggers or gunned down by the triads. Just put a spike in his arm, depressed the plunger, and stopped breathing. Quick and easy. Could have done the same, but you didn't. You were stronger than that. I survived. I don't know if that's something to feel proud of. It's just what I did. I don't think any less of Cabdell for doing what he did. I don't even know if he did it on purpose. But his death was a lesson, and I did my best to learn from it. Everything that happened in my childhood was that way. A lesson in disguise. Lessons about impermanence and the random cruelty of life. Lessons about what a huge mistake it is to get attached, and how to prioritize your own survival, no matter what. Those lessons were important. They kept you alive. But it's just as important to know when to leave that behind. Yeah, I know. But I'm having a hard time with that right now. We all carry the same scars. You, and me, and Gunshow, and Gobbit. Some run bigger and deeper than others, but we've all got them. I don't want mine anymore. Her voice goes small. Abruptly, she turns away. And that's enough. Ask me something else. I don't want to talk about this anymore. Uh, any thoughts about that last run? You know what drives me crazy about Gobbit? She does shit like this all the time. She doesn't think about anything. Not about the risk she takes, the consequences of her actions, or how her behavior can hurt her friends. She just jumps headfirst into whatever crazy schemes she's got in her head and damn everyone else. Maybe after all this, she'll finally learn her lesson. I have to say, I didn't expect to get off the sinking ship without blowing it apart. My money was on setting fire to the whole contraption and letting it burn. But you really pulled out all the stops. I can't believe we had to face down some kind of rat demon god thing, but we did. I'm sure there's a lesson in there somewhere, but I'll be damned if I know what it is. Alright. Oh, still no, no thing. Okay. Oh, that's it for this mission.